Art is often split from life in the contemporary art world. It's something quote-unquote other, and the rules and structures that apply to how we live don't apply to art. I think that art and life are two sides of the same coin. I don't mean that there isn't a place for just splashing color and having good fun, but I'm talking about what happens beyond that. That's often where fear starts to creep in. The clearer your destination, the less likely it is that you're going to get lost. So how do we establish our destination? Hi guys, welcome to my studio accompaniment channel. Play these videos in the background while you're sketching or painting as I share tips and tricks and helpful reminders while you work. I hope that you enjoy and let's get painting. As an artist and teacher for the last 13 years, I've often heard about fear. Fear of not being good enough, of making a mistake, of never improving, and so much more. I'm not perfect and I still have plenty of struggles, but I'm going to tell you the ways that I face those fears so I can get to work. I hope they inspire you to help you face your fears as well. First, I'm going to list the five tips and I'll explain them in detail after. Number one, get used to the fear. Number two, establish clear but flexible goals. Number three, manage your resistance. Number four, let go of being perfect. And number five, get back to your joy. You've probably heard some of these tips and thoughts before, but it's always nice to have little reminders. It's a bit like watering a plant. We benefit a lot from constant encouragement, and I hope this video gives you a little boost. If you haven't subscribed yet, here's a friendly reminder to click subscribe. So let me explain starting with number one, getting used to the fear. Over the years, as you improve in your work, you're going to face new challenges that you haven't had to deal with before. By really accepting that you're always going to have new learning curves, you're going to feel better when it comes to making mistakes. Can you think of a skill that's no longer a problem for you, but that was difficult at the very beginning? Maybe you used to struggle with proportions and it used to really stress you out. Now it's not a big deal and you can get down good proportions right off the bat. Now you're stressing about something new, like rendering or modeling. Well guys, unfortunately, we have to get used to it because this never stops. There's always going to be a new mountain, so we better get used to the climb. There will always be moments when you are quote unquote bad at something while you are learning it. Are you learning about composition? You'll probably be bad at it for a while. Are you learning how to measure for the first time? You're probably going to be making some pretty wonky figures for a little bit. But with practice, you will get better. You will climb that mountain. Phew, you did it. You reached a new height. That's great. But look over there. There's another mountain to climb. Number two, establish a clear but flexible goal. Well, how do we choose our goals? First, we have to know what we can do well, what's easy, and what's really, really hard. This helps us to know our baseline. If you don't know where you're going, how do you know that you're not there already? We don't just get in our cars and randomly start driving without a destination, right? We decide where we want to go, we make sure we have enough gas to get there, and we bring a roadmap, and then we go. Art is often split from life in the contemporary art world. It's something quote-unquote other, and the rules and structures that apply to how we live don't apply to art. I disagree. I think art and life are two sides of the same coin. Every time we go to make a drawing or painting, we need to have a clear goal in mind for what we want for that artwork. What do we want to achieve and in what time frame? To achieve a goal that's not too difficult, we need to find what you can do easily and then add a bit more to make it a challenge. This way you build confidence. Building confidence this way will make it easier when we have a bigger challenge to face. Just like how every time you get in the car, you have to decide where am I going to go this time? You always make sure you have enough gas, you, you know where you're going, you're not going to get lost. Same thing applies to every time you go to sit down to draw or to paint. So let's establish our destination. 
Are you going to be working on this drawing for 15 minutes? For 15 days? For 15 months? Is this a big project? Is this a tiny project? Is this a small sketch? Or is this a project where you're really trying to learn about the proportions or the anatomy or they may be a color study? We're going to have different goals for every project. When we are clear about our destination, it is much easier for us to know when we are on track or off track. So when I'm doing a drawing that I'm trying to get finished in one day, I cannot have the same expectations on myself that I would have on a three month painting. I can't expect the same level of proportions for a one day drawing that I can for a three month painting. I can do my best, but if I'm trying to get a whole piece finished in one day, I'm going to have to let some things go. In other words, a destination is just a clear goal. The clearer your destination, the easier the trip will be. You're going to get lost a lot less. When you establish a goal, I encourage you to push yourself a little bit with each new painting that you make. Add a new small challenge, a new goal for you to strive to meet. How do you choose what goal to focus on? How do you choose your destination? Students and beginners need to work on skill development. If you are a beginner, you need to find out what you are quote unquote bad at, which can often be hard to do. When students or beginners do this, it can feel at times like all you do is bad art. This is because you're only looking at it through the lens of how to improve. Don't worry too much about how to use those skills, just focus on gaining skills. You need to spend a long time with that lens, so be gentle on yourself in this time. Push yourself and do the best that you can, but don't worry if you don't manage this time, you can try again tomorrow. I'll be trying again tomorrow too. Advanced students and professionals, you guys need to focus on your composition, on your style, on your expression. You guys have learned the skills and now it's time to use them. So establish your goal and destination accordingly. Sometimes fears can become unbearable if the goal is set too high. Adjust your goal to something that you can achieve easily, plus a little bit more. This way you can push yourself just a little bit, create a small challenge that gives you a nice quote unquote win at the end. And this is going to help you build the confidence you need when facing bigger challenges. Number three, manage your resistance. Resistance thrives in obstacles. So what we have to do is find and remove as many obstacles as we can. For example, are you struggling to sit down to draw because you bought a bunch of fancy paper, but in order to use it, you have to cut it to size and all of your tables are covered with stuff and you have nowhere to cut your paper. In order to cut it, you have to clean the table, which then becomes cleaning your whole studio and not drawing at all. So what is the obstacle here? It's coming from not having your materials readily available for you. You have two options, either clean the whole studio so it's ready for next time, but encounter the same problem one week from now, or make things easier and just get some paper pads of different kinds and different sizes. Just have them ready to go. Remove the block of cutting the paper. If, for example, cutting the paper is an action that you need to do often, try to batch and cut all of the paper at the same time, ahead of time. That way it's ready to go and the block is removed. This is just an example. We all face different instances of these, but the pattern is the same. And you should probably still clean your studio anyway. My husband and I spend good time just looking at our space, looking for ways to make it more streamlined. I don't want to go hunting for my brushes or a certain paint. This can all become a block. And the more blocks like these I allow to develop, the more resistance creeps in. Number four, let go of being perfect. Striving to be perfect quickly becomes a trap. It constricts what you can do. Since perfection is impossible to attain anyway, the only way to be perfect is to not make any move which means no mistakes, which means no drawing, no painting. The 
The only artist who never makes a mistake is the one who never paints or draws. So you have to decide. That you want to make art more than you want to avoid making mistakes. This means letting go of perfection. So we need to make mistakes and we need to be comfortable making them. How did the pros become pros? Well, the pros are pros because they have made so many mistakes. The beginner hasn't made enough mistakes yet. So if you want to get good, let go of being perfect and go make some mistakes. Number five, get back to your joy. Why did you fall in love with art in the first place? What were the first images that you made? Draw those things for a while to bring back your original joy. For me, this was drawing fairies and mermaids for a bit. Those were the first subjects that I loved to draw, those and horses. It helped me to go back to the childlike mindset of simply drawing with less worries. So now what? How do I put all these tips to practice right now? First thing I recommend is play this video a couple of times while you're drawing. Second is that I recommend looking at your artwork that you're making right now. Go through each of the steps and see how you can implement more of that tip into your artwork. Last, if things are getting really tough, get in touch with other artists and see if they're feeling the same way. It's really useful to remember that you're not alone when going through a tough time. In closing, the act of creating a good painting is a story with a beginning and an end, just like a mythological tale. We face our fear and we come out the other side stronger for it, or at least with a good story. Follow me on Instagram at Tara Chapman Fine Art, where you can see behind the scenes and all of my most recent work. Sometimes I include little teaching tips in there, so you don't want to miss out on those. If you haven't subscribed yet, here's a friendly reminder to click subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy drawing!